<laughs> and the stream is up. There we go. With something about the VPN. So we are back. Uh, once again, this is our second week. Uh, we are taking a break from Dungeons of Drakenheim while some of our friends are uh, traveling about the world. Uh, and so instead, this week, we're jumping into a new system called Ghosts in the Dark. Uh, this is a work in progress system. Uh, it's a little bit of a mashup. You'll see elements of Monster of the Week and Powered by the Apocalypse, Blades in the Dark, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, and a healthy splash of Pokemon right across the top. Uh, our players have built uh, bespoke supernatural entities uh, using a system of traits, abilities, and tags. Uh, by combining these different traits and abilities, uh, they have created different supernatural creatures. So tonight, uh, we have uh, a church grim, uh, the guardian of uh, cemeteries and graveyards, uh, using the beast or the hound base uh, with the celestial death, uh, ice, and darkness traits, uh, and some really cool abilities. Um, we also have uh, Zenith the Raiju, uh, a sort of uh, forgotten local deity uh, who is, well, best described as a, a, an electric cat. <laughs> uh, also using, in this case, the feline base, uh, the tiny trait, and the lightning trait. Uh, so they are part of a group of uh, monsters, cryptids, ghosts, spirits, and supernatural entities uh, who are banded together to try and protect themselves and carve out a territory in the town of New Athens. Uh, New Athens is this huge metropolitan city um, sitting where uh, a river meets the ocean. Um, further ashore, there are deep and dark forests. Uh, it's an ancient city uh, with ties into the distant past. It's a multicultural city with people uh, arriving from all over the world, bringing their own cultures. Uh, and in the backdrop of all this are our supernatural entities competing over territory uh, and the right to feed on mundanes, which is what they call basically all the humans, uh, as they please. Uh, we left off at kind of a tense moment. Um, our Wendigo friend, uh, known as the Wendigo, uh, had just been attacked by a hunter uh, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, unfortunately, none of our folks know that that's going on. So instead, we are going to pick up. Um, would you all rather start together or separate? Oh. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to get separate. All right. Uh, well, let's jump in with the Grim. Uh, so, our huge black hound, uh, guardian of graveyards, uh, spirit of both death and holiness. Uh, what is the Grim doing? Where is he at? Well, he's, you know, currently at his favorite resting spot. You know, it takes a lot of energy to uh, maintain an area. So, he's at, his, he's at his favorite cemetery. You know, like, or it's like one of those more, like, popular ones that doesn't look as like corrupted like as like as old i guess it's like it looks like a newer cemetery yeah where the headstones haven't quite got gathered all that uh moss on them so i think maybe that's been a bit of a change um you all have have expanded your territory you all have expanded into these new places um the wendigo is carving out new businesses uh, the haunted doll is finding new houses to haunt. Uh, the uh, Raiju is uh, out um, spreading uh, his sort of presence throughout the city. And the Grim has new graveyards to guard. Uh, this is a newer one. Uh, your old graveyard uh, in the suburb of Greenbrier uh, was pretty ancient. Um, hundreds of years old. That was uh, the cemetery at St. Ruth's. Um, this one I think is, yeah, like you said, this one's newer. Um, it's, it's more carefully manicured. Um, I think this one is going to be, uh, this one's going to be Beacon Hill. This is the Beacon Hill graveyard. Um, 
And this is going to be in the area of Willow Green. Add that to our notes. Uh, what's happening in Beacon Hill right now? Um, right now, there seems to be kind of like a, a big fancy like funeral going on, where there's a lot of people like kind of showing up, and a, there's some that are actually mourning for the loss of the person, and there's some there for the, like to show and kind of fake the mourning loss of the loved one. Yeah, your presence sort of pervades uh, this carefully manicured graveyard. Um, and the folks were just sort of going through the motions, find themselves a little distracted. Um, there is a sense of observation. Uh, they can tell something is watching them. Uh, even though they can't see you, they find themselves looking up uh, at the shadow uh, that you are are lurking in, uh, just sort of feeling your presence. Um, I think maybe it's a... What are they called? Columbarium? Hey, I got that right. Uh, there's a large columbarium uh, where all of the funeral urns and ashes are stored. Um, and there's a big, deep shadow. Uh, and you are nestled comfortably within it. Um, what is the Grimm's goal? Like, what what is his driving aspiration? Not just his what he goals... needs... Go ahead. Sorry. I'll, I'll let you finish. I'll say, not just, like, what he needs to feed, but, like, what is he trying to do in the long run? <clears throat> So his goal in the long run is kind of help weed out the people that are aren't really mourning, or are just kind of like walking through the steps, or like you know, like the arrogant, like distant person hoping to get a little bit of inheritance from the said loved one. Try to help the kind of deter that, and then give the ones that are actually grieving a little bit of ease, like that he's there, kind of like resting, like his hand on their shoulder, saying it's going to be all right. Yeah, so there is a um, um, even though the Grim is very scary and intimidating, uh, its sort of core purpose is guardianship. Um, it is to enforce the hallowed nature of these grounds. Um, and you feel these people, it's, it's a two way street. They are uncomfortable in your presence, but you can feel them as sort of like, it's almost like when you have sand or just little, like little grit of something in your eye. Uh, it's just sort of an irritant that you are sorely tempted to remove. Um, all right. Uh, so let's jump over and check in on the Raiju. Um, so last time uh, you had encountered this strange being who was profaning uh, one of your symbols. Uh, these sort of um, inadvertent worshippers of yours have been spreading your image across town in the form of a uh, graffiti tag of this sort of stylized cat and lightning bolt. Uh, and someone or something is going around destroying those. Um, you caught one in the act and it just barely managed to escape. Um, what are you doing now? Uh, I'm trying to remember now because the ratlings. They were, they were ones that told us about it, right? Or Yes, so the Rattlings are, you're all sort of uh, information gathering uh, entities. Um, and uh, I'm playing around with exactly how minions work, uh, but I think right. functionally they have the... Um, uh, they have a humanoid base, um, but also a beast base. Um, and then the, uh, 
the tiny trait. Um, so they are a, a sort of just a swarm of little like two foot tall, scrabbly little rat people. Um, you only ever see between like six and 12 at a time. Uh, but you vaguely get the impression that there are more than that. Um, <laughs> but you just, you don't know where the rest of them are at any other time. So yes, the Rattlings, uh, the Rattlings let you know that someone was in your territory. Uh, some Something was in your territory that was sort of distressing them. But yeah. they did a poor job explaining it. Yes. So how do you want to follow up on that? And that was, yeah, uh, that was after I had already had the encounter with the... Um, I think that was actually before. It was? Oh, okay. last session you all, you fed, then you got the reports, yeah. then you all kind of went and did your own thing. And I think we ended with you all feeding again. Yeah. And it was your, it was that second feeding session that, that's when you ran into it. Yeah. At the time you said, I think that... I got just like some kind of sense in myself that something was wrong. Yes. When they were, uh, you're, you're sort of connected to these symbols. They're not quite, you know, it's not the same as someone building like a whole shrine. Um, but there is enough of your, there is enough of your presence being sort of invited by these tags that you can vaguely sense them. And when someone starts messing with them, there is a sense of discomfort. Do you want to sort of uh, try and lay in wait uh, and, and see if you can uh, catch one of these in the act? Um, I mean, I know it's been a bit. I might try going back to where I encountered the first one and just see if I can... I don't know, sense anything about, like, if there's anything you left behind or a trail yeah. that I can follow or whatever. Um, uh, I'll give you a cool tip here. Uh, your friend, the Grim, might be very good at this. Oh, really? Well, I'll go find him. So I think you're able to travel uh, a little faster than, than is normal. Um, with your, your ability to sort of uh, suppress your presence, no one notices this little cat that tucks itself like onto a bus <laughs> and you sort of <laughs> ride across town um, and you show up uh, out at Beacon Hill and... Um, and uh, you, unlike the mundanes, uh, you can easily see the Grim sitting in the shadow. Um, there is just a little bit of discomfort, though. Uh, Beacon Hill definitely does have sort of a... Even though it's not as strong in, as in other places, um, there is a certain barrier to it. Um, something that discourages uh, supernatural entities that aren't supposed to be there. But you're pretty well able to pass through. It's just a momentary discomfort. So what, what, what sort of greeting do you pass to the Grim? I try to quietly get his attention without, you know, disrupting anything. I already see you. I'm just pretending I don't see you. <laughs> I keep waving at him. <clears throat> so the the sort of classic image we have this massive. Uh, it's it's a dog, but it's a dog on such a scale that. Your, your brain goes, bear? Wolf? What? Uh, <laughs> this massive shadowy hound and this little cat 
what what does the raiju look like in its sort of mundane uh non-electrified form what sort of cat does it look like uh, i think we discussed this i remember the, uh when we first did this and i'm i think i said orange orangish cat of some kind like just kind of yeah you know a house cat uh so garfield yeah <laughs> a little bit smaller than garfield maybe but yeah something like that i hate mondays and i need the devotion <laughs> um yeah so we have this little orange cat um classic cat behavior like looking and pawing and paying attention to something no one else can see which is probably a little distressing for people who observe it um Although anybody that knows cats yet uh, has seen them fight invisible things before, so uh, yeah. So, so Grim, how long do you leave him on the hook before you finally acknowledge him? Um, not that long, because I uh, I tell him to uh, he'll come back when there's less people watching, so we could wait. Let me rethink this. So, I kind of, like, figure out, like, an escape plan to slip away to get away from the public eye. Oh, here in your... Uh, here in your home territory, you have no problem doing this. Um, I think you can easily slip back. There's, like, a big, like, maintenance area back here um, where they keep a lot of the, like... You know, they don't, they don't just leave it sitting out, but there's, like, giant... Uh, riding mowers back here and there's full like earth movers like um so there's a couple of like garage garage shacks down there um a couple of garage shack kind of kind of places some maintenance sheds um and y'all are able to slink back there unobserved well i uh i asked what uh aaron needs I don't know if I've ever really, really like, like, yeah, Zenith Raiju. So are you I'm going to say it? that, uh, yeah, Zenith doesn't quite speak, you know, full English or any language, really. And so it's kind of like just, you know, help, help this way, like stuff like that. Well, and you do a good enough job sort of conveying between yourselves. Um, when you all have to talk to humans, it gets a little dicey, since neither mm. of you have the humanoid base. Uh, you <laughs> definitely don't nope. pass for human. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, so the two of you together are, are easily able to uh, uh, make your way across your territory and um, one of the advantages of a space sort of being your territory uh, is that it is easier to do stuff like this. Um, you are less notable, less noticeable. Um, you're, you're sort of part of the fabric of the place. Um, so you make your way back to this alley. Um, and it's, you know, it's about a car and a half width apart. Uh, it probably gets used for like deliveries uh, maybe they like leave their trash out here, some like businesses and things. Uh, and on the wall, there is this tag. Um, it's uh, here's a, here's a fun question: What color is the Raiju's lightning? Um, you know, we think of different sort of depictions. Uh, you know, yellow, blue, white. Yeah, could be I always weird assumed purple. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yellow. But I guess it'd be like it's kind of like yellow and blue uh, mixed together. Not green, but like you know, like you have parts of it will be blue and parts of it will be yellow at times. Just some kind of unique, yeah, looking lightning, so it's not just uh Yeah. So your your symbol lightning. reflects this. Um it's a it's a uh 
mostly black and white, but um, as your presence sort of inhabits them, um, there's flickers of that blue and yellow uh, running through the white, um, almost giving it a sort of, not quite neon, but certainly like a, a uh, an infusion of light and color. Um, mm-hmm. So you all roll up and you can see this one. Um, it's like one third smeared. Um, it looks like someone came and they splashed this sort of black ink across it. Uh, but the black ink didn't just like cover over what was there. Uh, it made part of it run. Um, and you can feel that it's not just the visual here, but it has damaged the magic underneath. The thing here that extends your presence and allows you to sort of uh, feast on the awe and uh, awe and reverence of humans. Something has, has broken that. At least in part. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, what do you all want to do now that you're here? Um, I kind of, I guess, I don't know if I'd call it like sniff at or lightly touch the uh, graffiti just to see what if there's like residue whatever it was he was smearing around left behind yeah uh go ahead and give me a study check um so that's going to be plus um plus mind so hang on So that's seven plus what? Your mind stat. Uh, oh, so yeah, my mind is minus one, so be six, I guess. All right, on a six. Um, give me one second. Be right back. All right, on a six. Uh, give me, give me a roll, and I just need if it's odd or even. So roll, roll a d six. Yeah. Uh, five. All right, so it is odd. Uh, odd. Um. So you're examining this, uh, uh, this, this sort of, uh, marred, uh, symbol and a, one of the trash cans is out, uh, further up the street. Uh, it's more of an old school. It's not like a big plastic, uh, it's, you know, it's a big metal container, uh, and it falls over and makes a loud noise. What do y'all want to do? What? Uh, so there's a, a uh, large sort of... Say I'm echoing. Um, there is a large um, old school metal trash can and something knocks it over. Oh, okay. Oh, I investigate that. Right. Uh, let's let the grim go first. Uh, give me a, uh, give me a study check, and you can use your scent bonus here if you succeed. Uh, 
study. Would that be plus mind? Uh, so in this case, uh, I'll let you choose plus mind or plus body. Uh, what is mind? Body is a plus one. All right. All right. 2d6. I got it at 8, so 10. All right. On a 10, uh, we go and we look at our uh, study action. And you get to ask uh, three questions because uh, you get a bonus because you have the scent ability. Um, what is a trait of this creature? What is happening here? What are the properties of this supernatural subject? Is there a weakness I can exploit? What factions are at play here? What is being hidden here? What is this creature's motive? Not all of these will apply, um, but you get to pick three. And you can do them sequentially in case one makes another one more feasible. All right. Uh, modem? What is this creature's modem? Well, so you haven't seen a creature yet. Gotcha. All you have is a trash can knocked over. All I was... <clears throat> See, last time I was able to ask two questions, right? Yeah, he gets a bonus because of his scent ability. Well, no, I was like, uh, I was trying to remember what what was the two questions I asked because wasn't it? Uh... That's what I think it was the weakness one, and maybe I asked about motive. I can't remember now. Um, I think that's right, and the the weakness was uh, it seemed like it was vulnerable to lightning, which you took advantage that's of. And the motive was to destroy your symbol. Yeah. Which was kind of an obvious one, but still. I asked it anyways. Alright, so uh, can I start off with like a threat? Like, can I say uh, show yourself or I'll hunt you down? Yeah. Uh, we'll call that your version of um, what is being hidden here. Um, yep. You, you growl this threat, and uh, you see a uh, a small group of rotund raccoons. Um, they are much larger than they should be. They're more like two and a half, three feet tall. Um, and they're not quite spherical, but these are some thick boys. <laughs> um. You can tell that there's more... I mean, you all feel an instant sense of kinship. These are supernatural entities of some kind. Um, and they sort of nervously uh, come out from behind the trash can. Um, what's your next question? Um, what are you doing here? Uh, their motive... Um, so they come out sort of nervously, um, but you gather their nervousness is not, they're, they're not happy they were seen. Um, and as they come out, you realize uh, these things seem to have ill intent. Um, hmm. And in fact, you piece it together right at this moment. Um, this symbol being weakened uh, starts to weaken your claim. Excuse me. Uh, starts to weaken your claim on the territory. Mm -hmm. These things seem to be trying to sort of uh, not muscle in, <laughs> but to sort of sneak in at the edges. Yep. Take advantage of the yeah, the mm. see if one more. Can I tell what faction is at play here? Yeah. I know it's one of our border factions. 
Yeah, so you piece this together. Um, this is a sort of scavenger group. Uh, there's a lot of these groups, and they have kind of a loose network, um, but they don't, wouldn't necessarily, like, defend each other. Um, but packs of sort of supernatural entities that are essentially like creatures of alleys and garbage cans and discarded things. Um, there's some literal like trash monsters, <laughs> uh, things that lurk in the bottom of, of like bins and, uh, and dumpsters. There's scavenging creatures, foxes, raccoons. Um, there's some groups that are feral cats, um, but they would know to steer clear of, uh, Zenith's territory. Um, but now that you've asked your third question, um, these things seem hostile. Uh, Mm -hmm. what, what do y'all want to do about it? Mm. Can I, how many are there? Uh, so there's like. I'm going to say there's six of them. Uh, they're, they're essentially, they're weak individually, but they're functioning as like a gang or a pack. Mm-hmm. So basically as one creature. So what's the plan? They're in your territory. They're here with ill intent. Do you want to talk? Do you want to fight? Do you want to uh, blast them with holy magic? <laughs> yeah, I was considering yeah, doing my usual shock them with lightning. All right. Let's yeah, let's go for here. it then. Um, cause trouble yeah so we're uh this system no initiative you just call it as you as you like and we'll just sort of roughly try to take turns back and forth um i want to say you haven't you haven't used any essence since the last time you fed right um no i I used one that's right for something i can't remember but yeah uh yeah uh do you want to make an attack or use magic um i was doing the, the lightning magic attack whatever so yeah like shoot lightning um which would be invoke yes uh yeah so roll uh invoke plus uh spirit okay so i got a four plus two oof Uh, yeah i know i'm not doing well here these so this hits you two different ways one these things came prepared um they came thinking that you're weak and Mm. you discover that they're not wrong. Uh, your symbol being damaged here would be the equivalent of like someone coming and just like swinging a baseball bat and knocking a piece out of one of your shrines. Um, Mm. being here, you're just a little off. And so you charge up this magic and it just does not hit the way you're hoping. Uh, One of them is going to skitter out and uh, it slashes at you. um, And when it swings its little claw, little clawed paw at you, um, you can feel that it's not just a physical attack, but it is attacking you with a concept. Um, It is literally the concept of like all the bad things that can happen to you rooting around in trash. Uh, so like glass shards and rusty metal and mm. weird uh, diseases and rottenness and this slashes at you. Uh, you're going to take two harm. Uh, Grim, what would you like to do? Oh, so I'm going to um, come in there. I'm going to attack the first one, but also cast uh, death. Attack with death. The uh, 
think I'm going to say it properly right now. Uh, give me a roll, your choice of plus body or plus mind. We're doing a, we're doing a plus mind. Uh, that'd be a nine. Nice. Uh, so you... Uh, you lash out, uh, you bite into one of these creatures, um... On a nine, you're able to do harm. Uh, it does harm in return. Uh, which which element? You've got uh, holy to use, and you've got ice to use, if you'd like. Um, using holy. Uh, so a neat side effect on the holy magic. Uh, this thing's pretty weak. It's in your territory. Uh, your holy uh, attacks have the banishing tag. If you want, you can just poof some of these things out of your territory. Yeah, I'll do that. Isn't that uh, like two, or is it, is it two essence? Uh, so you don't even have to add anything for that. That's just part of your, your attack. Um, so you, you lash out and you bite one of these creatures and uh, there's a sense of There's a brief sense of like hallowedness that flows into this alley, um, uh, but it's a it's not like the loud like angels descend, bright lights and trumpets, whatever. Um, it's almost the sense of like walking quietly and reflectively through a cemetery. Um, but you channel some of that energy, and especially that ability of holy magic to. Uh, to set boundaries and to repel and the creature that you bite uh, there is just this like <sighs> um, and this thing just disperses it's not dead uh, but it has essentially been uh, disincorporated and it will slowly mm -hmm. reform outside of your territory um, so there's still a couple of these things um, they're going to start using some kind of magic what do y'all want to do? Um, can I can close? I, uh, no, what? Said so I want to close the gap and go for another attack. Or, you know what? Better yet, is there like any darkness behind them from where they knocked over the dumpster? Oh yeah, this is like uh, this is like a multi-story alley. Tons mm -hmm. of shadows, even in the middle of the day. So I'm going to teleport behind them. <laughs> with All my right. shadow walk. Yeah, you use your shadow uh, shadow walk ability. Uh, you just sort of... Um, it's almost like you just dissolve into your own shadow. And then walk out behind them. Um, do you want to make another attack? Yeah. Alright, make that attack roll. Um, and that's I'm your good. choice, plus mind or plus body. Uh, it's gonna be mine, and it's gonna be about the same. Actually, it's gonna be instead of a holy, it's gonna be ice this time. Uh, that'd be eleven. Nice on an eleven. Uh, you get some bonuses. Uh, we're we're using some uh, monster of the week adjacent rules here. Uh, you <sighs> inflict terrible harm. You suffer less harm. You force them where you want them, uh, or you gain the advantage. Take plus one forward, or give plus one forward. But can you go through that one more time? My volume is kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, so additional harm, uh, deal additional harm, suffer less harm, you force them where you want them, uh, or you gain the advantage, take plus one forward, or give plus one forward to another hunter. I even have hunter still in there. Entity. I will this time take one less harm. All right. Uh, so you channel this sort of frigid power. Uh, you lash out and... 
um, you you sort of uh, disincorporate or discorporate one of them, uh, and another catches just the edge of some of that magic, uh, and it is now frozen in place. Uh, basically, you have uh, you have subdued them. Uh, do you want to kill them, uh, or what do you want to do? Uh, I'm definitely going to kill them. All right. Uh, how do you how do you finish this little uh, raccoon spirit? So, so this one I kind of like throw it around like a rag doll, like as like a as you see like a a dog gets a hold of a snake and just whips it around, tearing chunks off of it. The one that is frozen, I will pretty much try to knock it as hard as I can into a wall so it will shatter. And then is there one more, right? Uh, sure. Just those two. And the last one, after I do that, I will pounce on it and, like, go, like, right behind his head and, like, try to, like, you know, choke it out or, like, snap the neck. Nice. Uh, you disperse these creatures. Um as sort of lesser supernatural entities, uh, they don't have a ton of physical substance to them. Uh, they're almost more like loosely animated ideas. Uh, part of mm-hmm. the reason they want more territory is to be more real, more substantial. Um, but you manage to sort of discorporate them. Uh, something much like them will come back eventually um, wherever there are you know, uh, humans with trash and junk and, you know, every time someone, uh, finds a raccoon in their dumpster or, uh, you know, throws out a bag of trash and is like, Ooh, that was so gross. Um, all of that will sort of congeal into another one of these spirits. Uh, but you have successfully fended them off and reinforced your territory. So not hurt terribly bad. Uh, you still have uh, the damage on the uh, the symbol, and you might be able to track their trail. Uh, what do y'all want to do? Um, I'm definitely going to start tracking his trail. All right. Uh, so you spend one essence for that, uh, and then give me a study uh, plus mind. Would that be 12? Jeez. All right, on a 12. Um, what follows uh, is an extended uh, sort of montage of <laughs> you all roaming through the city, uh, looking every bit like a, like a, a live-action Disney uh, movie about talking animals from the 90s. Um. You know, the classic duo of big dog, small cat. (laughs) You just need like a sassy bird. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so we see you all like ducking from alley to alley, running through traffic. Um, You startle someone who didn't see you and they like throw all their papers. Um, Little little bits of shenanigans. Um, It gets a little more tense uh, as you all pass out of your territory. Uh, the scent is continuing um, out of this area, which I arbitrarily have named the Narrows. Um, so you find yourself sort of heading towards uh, por- towards part of the bay. Um, so you pass from this sort of like uh, sort of urban neighborhood uh, into a more industrial part of town. And then finally that like ocean breeze kind of hits um i'm gonna ask one of you to give me a disappear check um you did an excellent job tracking uh and we'll get your questions here in a second uh but let's see how well you remained undetected would be a 2d6 2d6 plus uh typically it's plus body unless you have a an ability that says otherwise I don't know if invisibility. Yeah, if you want, you well, spend I... an essence to do it. Never mind. Yeah, that's something else. That's what I used my essence on was invisibility. Yeah, that's right. 
But normally, okay, where is it? Wait, what did I roll? I rolled an eight. You said plus body? Yes. Uh, okay, that's uh, no bonus or anything. Cool. So eight no cool. detriment. Okay. On an eight, uh, you are mostly undetected, um, but there is potential then, for misfortune. Um, if I uh, uh, like assist him, what is a plus one forward would do? Um, let me look at your. You have pack hunter. So what that would do is you would both get a bonus, but it wouldn't be enough to push this. Um, it wouldn't be enough to push this up to a higher level of success. But it's still already a pretty yeah. solid success. Worth a shot. Um, so, uh, you follow this down to the docks. Um, and with your study, um, you realize you're passing into another territory. Um, there is a... In your own territory your presence sort of permeates the whole area for those who know what they're looking for. Um, they might not know you specifically, but there is an unmistakable mm. sense of like what you all are like. Um, and there's a sense of that here. Um, you catch impressions of uh, the ocean and darkness uh, things of the deep itself. Um, go ahead and ask your study questions. Um, you rolled, did you get a, that was over a 10 again, right? I thought you got an eight. Uh, he got an eight to disappear, but you, what did you roll for the, um, the study check? I think it's, uh, give me one sec. So my last roll was a 10. He said plus two is either a 12 or a 10. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you uh, uh, you have three questions to ask again. Uh, so you're in this new territory. Um, what do you want to know? Um, figure out why they are dethroning his uh, sculptures. Um, figure out their, I mean, I guess wise motive, um, how strong they are, and um, what their territory looks like. Well, here's what I'll throw out you might want to throw in a who there somewhere because you don't actually know who you're dealing with yet. Gotcha. So, why, who. And I guess weakness. What well, goes? Why? Who? Weakness. Yeah. So uh, it takes a minute to figure out what's happening here. Um, we're going to say it's like a late afternoon at this point. Um, this is like a, a an industrial dock in full motion. Um, there's trucks coming and going. Pallets are being unloaded. Um, big sort of cargo containers. Uh, have been brought off ships and things are being brought out of them. Um, tons of mundanes around. But as you look more closely, um, you start to spot the incongruities. Uh, there's lots of mundane workers, but there's some people here that don't smell right. They don't smell like humans. Uh, there is a... I mean, part of it is covered by that sort of estuary smell where, like, the river meets the ocean and sort of the smell of the docks. And But even underneath all of that, there is a, uh, a sort of rank fishiness to it. Um, you have heard of something like this before. You don't know the specifics because your old territory was pretty far from here. Um, but you have heard that there is some kind of faction uh, that comes from the ocean and controls several dock areas. Um, and your guess is that that's this faction. Um, you've heard them called Deep Ones before. 
Uh, so that's your who. Uh, looking at this right now, um, Um, so you wanted to know a weakness and what was the other? It was weakness. We got who and then, um, I don't remember the last one. It was, was it, why were they messing with your territory? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so two of those kind of go together. Um, you smell other things here. Um, and one of them is very noticeable. Uh, so you smell lots of this fishiness, but you also smell, uh, you smell blood or something close enough to blood. Um, you might call it ichor. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. but blood and ichor have been, have been spilled near here. Um, and you smell werewolves. Uh, your suspicion uh, is that there are werewolves uh, trying to push in on this territory. You fuck it. Alrighty then. With the werewolves mm-hmm. pushing it. Do you know anything that the werewolves do not like? Uh, you're asking like weaknesses of werewolves? Yeah. Uh, some of these are pretty obvious. Um, now, you, you would know that there are many kinds of werewolves. Uh, There are different, like, families, bloodlines of werewolves. uh, And there are different, like, clans of vampires. Um, uh, Some werewolves have to transform um, during the full moon. Uh, Some of them can only transform during the full moon. Um, Some of them transform when they are uh, scared or agitated. And they have difficulty... Uh, sort of holding on to their human appearance. Um, silver uh, is, is pretty effective uh, on quite a few kinds of werewolf. Uh, fire is pretty universally effective. Um, silver, fire, controlling emotion, uh, powerful smells. Um, that can sometimes sort of overpower um so sometimes folks who want to mess with a werewolf will basically drop like uh essentially like pepper spray <laughs> uh or um uh anise seed oil which I'm probably not pronouncing right uh but a very powerful smell um and they can use it to sort of throw off werewolves That's the downside of being super famous is their weaknesses are really well known. <laughs> so you smell that they have been here. You don't smell any like currently here. Um, but it does sort of tell you a story of what's going on. Gotcha. Well, shall we start trying to butt in on their territory? Yeah. So are yeah. you uh, are you going to try and uh, sort of retaliate by attacking them? I 
Attacking them or strategically start placing uh, um, uh, the Raiju's uh, statue. Yeah. So you want to try and like push in. Um... Push in so we could strengthen one of ourselves up. So when one of them inevitably comes over and attacks us, well, he'll be a little bit stronger. Okay. So you want to reinforce your own territory. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that one is uh, not terribly difficult. Um, so you know that you need... Um, these symbols are, are sort of how this has been done. Um, do you want to... I'll give you a couple different options. So you could take a very mundane approach... And basically uh, pay and or sort of equip people like mundanes to go do this for you. Um, that would be one approach. It's a little bit more blatant. Um, the consequences might be more um, more dramatic if you're noticed. Um, but it'll be very effective and pretty cheap. Uh, the other option would be to... Uh, basically amp up Zenith uh, spiritually uh, to try and influence people to do this on their own. That one's a little bit slower, but it's more subtle. Uh, and it's a little bit more organic, so it won't be traced straight back to you. Which way do y'all want to do it? Mm. Or do you have another idea? Oh. We have another idea. <laughs> well, I mean, we could be as blatant as the werewolves and go in there and start uh, smashing things. Hmm. Or do we try to pick a werewolf here and there? Well, and just to remind you, so the people who messed with you are actually these deep ones. But they're being pressured by werewolves. Mm. So, could we help the deep ones with the werewolf problem, or? Yeah, that's an option. I'd like to explore that one a little bit more. Like, I don't know if there's a way to communicate with I don't know what you're with the grim we got this right so uh, once again I'll sort of lay out some options you all would know that there is there's sort of a diplomatic way to do this uh, where you basically like send a messenger and set up an official meeting um, or you can just barge in and go find someone which do you prefer <laughs> Uh, I think we'll try the uh, diplomatic solution first. I'd say, yeah, that probably is a good idea. Make us look like the bigger person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what kind of emissary do you want to send? Um, you could send a mundane. Um, you could send, uh, or you could take a minute and we can sort of come up with another, uh, like a specialist for you all. Hmm. Think of the specialist. All right. Uh, what kind of what kind of entity are you going to send to represent you? Um. Like a ghost of some kind, or yeah, you can do that. Uh, not a ghost. <laughs> so I'll say because you're you're only a relatively low rank. Um, they're not going to be quite as strong as you all. Um, well, they're going to be substantially less strong than you all. Um, so they'll only have like a base and maybe one ability. Yeah. Because yeah, the Bratlings we chose, they were, what were they? Uh, so the Bratlings, uh, have, um, the beast base 
and then the tiny swarm ability. Okay. We'll send a ghost for now, because I can't think of anything uh, <laughs> or, uh, better off the top of my head. All right. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, this is going to be uh, probably a humanoid apparition uh, with the immaterial ability. Um, unless you all want a a spirit I'm being attacked by a goblin uh oh um, yeah uh, do you want it to be a humanoid spirit or do you want it to be like a different different base uh, humanoid spirit works for me cool so, Humanoid uh, for now, and when we come up with a cooler one, <laughs> we come up with a cooler idea. So we get more power to have a have a stronger one, right? Uh, what do you want to name this one? Mm. That is a good question. Jasper Jeeves. Uh, I like Jasper because it also it, it's sort of traditional butlery name, uh, but it, yeah. it also sounds like Casper, and they're sort of ghosty. Right. I am being savaged by a beast. <laughs> There's a hound. It's on the attack. Well, as long as your beast doesn't leave uh, its hair all over your. Uh keyboard <laughs> all of your electronics he's trying to climb up my arm because he wants to go back outside notice uh, the emphasis on the word back back outside <laughs> he's already been outside he has been out. yeah. he's eaten dinner he has water he would like to go out again to play in the yard well, yeah sure okay uh so uh I think Jasper, uh, you all sort of recruited along the way here. Um, uh, Jasper is an old ghost, but not a super powerful ghost. Um, and I think we're gonna say he's a ghost ghost. He is fully like was a person and died. Um, so he was like the the butler for a house that burned down um, mm -hmm. like 120 years ago or something. Hundred years ago, um, some apartments were built over that old house, and so you all annexed him into your new territory. Um, he was surprisingly easy to convince because he likes to serve people. <laughs> uh, he likes to be efficient and take care of things. Um, that is part of his nature, permanently sort of burned into his specter. Um, so he is also a pretty smart dude, um, with some, some skill in, um, sort of protocol and diplomacy. Uh, so he's going to reach out to the deep ones, uh, to make contact. Um, so let's take a minute and let you all feed. Um, I don't think anything too crazy is going on. Um, what's what's happening where the Grim is feeding? Which uh, which cemetery is he at? Um, so I'm at the closest cemetery, which I don't know if, if it's the new one or the old one. Um, well, let's go ahead and come up with a third one. Um. I think we're going to call this um, uh, so this one is uh, attached it's another churchyard uh, and this is attached to uh, Patmos Baptist Church uh, a sort of uh, 
uh, a church in the Narrows, uh, the sort of closest point in your territory. Um, I think the funerals here are a little more exuberant. Um, the ones at St. Ruth's are very solemn and traditional. The ones at Beacon Hill are a little bit modern, sometimes a little austere. There's not a lot of like trappings that go with it. Um, and in the Patmos Cemetery, uh, it's a little more volume. Uh, this is these are people who sing hymns, um, sing hymns and songs. Uh, you can hear music coming from the church uh, throughout the week. Um, it's it's sort of a noisier environment, but it's also. I'll let you decide what what does the Grim prefer. So, is it? I mean, is really like have like a a difference? He likes to kind of like meander around the the grave sites because sometimes he likes the quieter, older ones. Sometimes he likes the the newer, modern ones, and sometimes he likes the loud, boisterous ones. Depends on his mood. You know, like everything's changed throughout the day. Like some days you're on the wrong side, some days you're on the right side. And you know, he just got done like defeating a bunch of raccoons, so he's kind of like amping himself up. So he's he's <laughs> kind of enjoying it, kind of like listening to the music but all while keeping a watchful eye on the crowd yeah so i think maybe there's not even uh i think there's a service happening inside the church uh, maybe there's just like one person just kind of like hanging out in the cemetery uh and we kind of see the grim uh just sort of like tapping a paw uh in time with the tambourine inside um so you are able to feed, uh, nothing too crazy. Um, we jump over to Zenith. Um, so I thought I'd give you the chance. We talked about you being able to sort of influence. Um, you can extend your influence out through all of these tags. Um, what do you want to use your influence for? Mm. Like, what kind of effect do you want it to have? And I guess I would say with this too, um, it might be related to like what you used to do, uh, maybe mm -hmm. as like a, you know, more sort of agricultural, uh, sort of guardian deity. Um, but what effect does it have? Let's so, say, yeah, back in his, yeah, homeland where he came from. Yeah. He was kind of, uh, was more yeah farmland and stuff but yeah like you would kind of try to influence people to be uh like fruitful i don't know i'm not sure what, how to word it but yeah uh yeah so uh, maybe you're maybe you're sort of leaning into like the like lucky cat uh sort of fortune mm -hmm. um energy uh, going from like protecting fields to, um, you know, sort of like protecting businesses. Um, so maybe like places that have your mark. Um, well, let's let's have you roll. Let's let's see how well you do this. Um, okay. I'll let you roll. I'll let you choose mind, mind, heart, or spirit. Uh, spirit, my best one. It's got a plus two, so it'd be two d six. Yeah, two d six plus spirit. So let's see. I got a six. <laughs> All right, even with your bonus. Yeah, that's with my bonus. <laughs> it's the same as before. All right. Uh, so with a six, um. So on a six, um, you you sort of let your spirit, you, you sort of uh, uh, you sort of disassociate, or or uh, there's not really a humanoid term for it. Uh, you sort mm -hmm. of relax your grip 
on the sort of avatar of yourself and you are sort of present all throughout your territory. Um, you can feel sort of the, uh, just the combination of sort of positive feeling uh, from the people who liked your tag and spread it, uh, from the businesses that are benefiting from it. Um, all of their sort of positive energy feeds back to you. Um, but whatever happened to your symbol, uh, whatever this sort of uh, marring did, uh, it's almost like someone has like poured uh, like a half cup of um, salt water into your coffee. Uh, there is a an unpleasant taste that really sort of cuts through. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not able to sort of push your influence any further, um, but you are at least able to uh, restore your essence. All right, we pick up the next day. Um, Jasper returns, uh, bearing a message. Uh, they have met with the leader of this group of, uh, you find out they are technically Deep One hybrids. Um, the Deep Ones themselves are unable to leave the water for long periods of time. And so the hybrids uh, are sort of their servants on the shore. Uh, but the leader of the hybrids um, is willing to meet with you all. But he wants to meet... Um, in their territory. That's fine. All right. Uh, is there any um, preparation you all want to make? Any planning? Um, yeah, I... Uh... I think we should start uh, rallying the 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 group because I, I don't know if we'll be us two will give us a strong enough impression over the other people, but they might think that we're weaker and that we're not really that scared of. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this will this will work neatly. Um, so the meeting is set for. Uh, like late in the evening, basically it's going to be like a like a two a.m. meeting. Um, so you all you reach out to Teddy and you reach out uh, to the Wendigo, and you hear back from Teddy. Teddy is in, uh, but Teddy has to. Teddy is sort of locked in creating these new minions, uh, right up until about the time you all need to be at the meeting. But he'll be there. Um, but the Wendigo does not respond. All right. Yeah. <laughs> also, I guess you all have to have Jasper text for you because neither of you have the humanoid trait. <laughs> so you're you're sort of dictating to Jasper, and Jasper is sort of relaying this info to you. Sounds about right. Uh, what do you all want to do? Um, hmm. We feel like... So we'll give it a, a appropriate amount of time for the Wendigo not to respond back to us. Mm -hmm. Or I feel like we should uh, head over to his territory, or like head, head over to his area to see what's going on. Yeah, so yeah. do you want to check in with like his businesses, or do you want to go to his house? What's your first stop? Uh, we're starting at his house. So yeah, go to his house first. Uh, give me a, uh, I'll let, uh, why don't you give me a study check, uh, and add plus one, uh, since you're sort of working together. 
Uh, I got a six, seven, study is... Mine. Study is mine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So nine? So eight, nine. Okay. Eight, We're already including sort of a free assist, so... Um, as you sort of examine, uh, you just very quickly realize no one's been here. Um, there's, there's like still mail in the mailbox. Um, but you notice the Wendigo's truck is gone. Um, yeah, there's no indication that he's been here for a while. Uh, and with your particular sort of abilities, you can just smell that he has not been here. What do y'all want to do next? Um, well, we will, I guess, start asking our rat wings where they last seen him or his businesses. Yeah. I last heard of him. Uh, so let's do, let's do a minion check. Uh, I've decided we're going to roll these with rank. Uh, these are rank one minions. They're going to do 2d6 plus one. Uh, so, uh, Aaron, how about you roll that? Say 2d6 plus one. Yep. And that is a nine. All right, on a nine. Uh, so the ratlings always have excellent information. They're just bad at conveying it. Uh, <laughs> it it's sort of like having uh, like cameras that are on all the time. Um, hmm. But you have to figure out how to go back and find the things that were, were meaningful. Um, but in this case, uh, they were paying special attention... Um, so they know that the Wendigo got in his truck, went out to hunt because it was sort of the right time of day for that. Uh, he went out to hunt. Um, he was hunting out on the edge of Greenbrier, um, uh, between like Greenbrier and, um, uh, Greenbrier and Willow Green. Um, and... Normally he goes out, uh, he finds someone, he feeds, he goes and dumps the body like out in the woods somewhere. Um, but they never saw him come back. Well, the first step is to go find his truck. Yeah. So, so yeah, does the truck have anything about it that's like easy to track? Like, does it leak oil or anything? Or, um, I think in this case, because you know him so well, and it's your territory, and it's something he uses all the time, um, most people wouldn't notice it. But to the grim, his truck reeks of hunger and blood and death. Um. Maybe because it's sort of the opposite of your nature. Uh, your nature is like um, the process of grieving and sort of uh, appropriately handling big emotions. Um, it's wrapped in fear and anger and denial and all the things that goes through someone's head before they die horribly. Um, you're able to sort of track the trail um, and I think it leads you back to the Narrows. Um, you find sort of a corner um, where you you smell him, and then he then the truck goes off, and you can't smell it anymore. What do y'all want to do? Hmm. It's sort of like a downtown intersection, not like on a main street, but like on a side street. Um, I guess we'll just keep following the trail, just in the shadows. Uh, give me another check. This one's going to be higher, uh, just because this is a, a vehicle moving, like, down the road. Yeah, that's fine. I got a six. What modifiers are you wanting? Uh, this is study, so I think this is going to be mine. 
So I got eight. All right, on an eight. Um, yeah, I think you're able to put this together. I'll say this. It takes longer than you'd like. Um, you all are starting off kind of like in the morning. And it fully takes you like three or four hours to go to the house, go to a business, talk to the ratlings, find the site, follow the truck. Um, and again, you're doing this very homeward bound style. Uh, dog <laughs> dog and cat walking. <laughs> yep. Um, but eventually it leads you out to a road um, kind of out out in the hills or out, out towards the woods, um, out here, you're starting to talk like dirt roads or, um, like thick gravel, um, not completely unmaintained, but certainly an area where like, they don't really care if your car can make it out here. <laughs> um, and you can smell the gunpowder discharge. You smell the Wendigo's blood. And you smell a lot of mundanes, which is weird. What do you want to do from here? Um. So we smell a lot of mud danes, and it's being very weird. Yeah, so you would think if the Wendigo is injured, um, you would expect to smell like a werewolf or a spirit or a vampire or, you know, um, for a mundane to get the drop on the Wendigo. That seems odd. <laughs> So we're probably not dealing with um, regular mundanes. Seems like a good guess. Yeah, I think you know well enough. If you smell gunpowder, gunpowder, uh, multiple mundanes, um, and um, they managed to injure uh, and. You don't know where the Wendigo is, but they managed to injure him and something. That all screams hunters to you. And that's worrying. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe not surprising. <laughs> the Wendigo has eaten a lot of people over the years. <laughs> yeah. They do that. It, it, it happens. So can we tell where the Wendigo is or where he's gone or where they've taken him, I guess you'd say? Um, so it's the afternoon. Um, I think if the Grim drops an essence on scent... You all can finish this out and find them. Otherwise, there's a little uh, bit of a, a needle in a haystack. Uh, if I in essence on scent? Oh, yeah. you got it. You you got it. All right. Uh, you amplify your sense of smell. Uh, very sort of like anime style here. Um, the world becomes sort of black and white. Uh, with like colored uh, colored clouds and streams uh, sort of layered over it, representing all the different smells around you. Uh, there's a unique smell. Um, the uh, zenith has an odd smell. Uh, you catch a little hint. There's a lot of cat, obviously, but you catch little hints of spray paint. And also little hints of, like, incense. Um, but you manage to sort of uh, cut your way through. Uh, the mundanes, their smell is not that unique. Uh, but the Wendigo's blood smells like death and decay. 
and it's very noticeable. Uh, so you're able to sort of start following. Uh, the trail is thin. Um, the Wendigo was bleeding, uh, but he was also being moved quickly. Um, so the smell doesn't have a chance to sort of permeate. It's like a long, thin trail. Uh, but you follow it for a couple of miles. It turns down a side road, um, leading like deep into some woods. What do y'all want to do? Um, do we, do we go get the doll? Help us, or do we go in together? Uh, Teddy told we... you that he is locked into this ceremony to create his minions until pretty close to when you're going to go meet the deep ones. Right. Gotcha. Well, yes. we better go in. I guess it's just us then. So as you get closer, uh, you can smell a uh, sense that you associate with vehicles. Uh, you smell like the, the friction heat on rubber of the tires. Uh, you smell oil and gasoline. Uh, you smell some cigarette smoke. Um, and then sort of underneath it all, uh, the smell of gunpowder and the smell of the Wendigo's sort of fetid rotten blood. Um, this road leads, uh, it's, it's probably like about a car width across. Um, and it has been sort of carved into a thick forest. Uh, so the branches are almost sort of like wrapping up, um, not quite meeting over this road, but pretty close. So there's just like a slender spray of sunshine, uh, down this path. So what do you think you want to do? Um, I guess keep going down the path, uh, but in the shadows and mm. on high alert for anyone with a with a gun. Yeah, um, I'll let one of you uh, go ahead and give me. Well, I'll let you choose. Is it more important to be hidden or more important to know what's coming? Mm -hmm. Um, that was a tough one. I'm gonna go with hidden because you guys figure out what's coming after the fact because they won't see you at first, which will give you time to react. All right. Uh, so, in that case, uh, give me a disappear check. I got a nine as the base. All right, on a nine. Um, you should be able to get... You're able to get pretty close. Um, you're sneaking along. Um, uh, there are... Like, you, you can you look and you can tell there are traps along the way here. Um, someone has... Someone has set up various uh, little, like... You're actually surprised at the variety. Uh, you find what seems like... Um, my mammals are fighting... Um, uh, there's some simple trip wires uh, there's um, a carefully concealed uh, like uh, spike strip uh, for a car that like uh, you know was, was coming too quick down this road um, and it's interesting because you would guess the car uh, uh, vehicles come down this road so someone systematically came back out and set all these up. They like re-rigged these traps after they got here. Um, so you managed to bypass uh, 
most of them, as far as you can tell, um, sneaking along this sort of wooded path. It winds uh, back and forth a couple of times, uh, and you find yourself outside an older farmhouse. Um, it doesn't look well maintained. Um, the grass is kind of overgrown uh, back here. Um, you can see there's like some barns and sort of accessory buildings in the back. Um, but it's sort of a large old school farmhouse. Uh, very sort of rectangular construction. Uh, but it's uh, two large stories. Um, and stretches back a pretty good ways. Lots of windows on the front. What do y'all want to do? What do I want to do? I want to scout it out and see the number of occupants inside. All right. Uh, let's do another study check. This will be plus mind. Nine. On a nine. Uh, so on a nine, you get to ask uh, two questions, because we'll assume you're using your scent. Um, what um, do you want to ask? Never occupants aside. And um, how deadly are they to me? So... Uh, probably, uh, you, you smell seven or eight different distinctive humanoids, um, which is backed up by the fact that you see, um, you see four, uh, pickup trucks. Um, hunters are hard to gauge. Um. Um, hold on. I'm going to throw my dog out the door so my mammals quit yelling at each other. I just want to emphasize that in 10 years, uh, Russell never figured out how to open a door and Kent is a year old and knows how to like jiggle the handle and get the door open. So Great. I have to lock it. I have to lock him outside anyway. Oh gosh. Hunters, hard to gauge. Uh, some yes. hunters are, they're amateurs. Um, uh, they're, you know, basically, uh, you know, people just shooting guns at monsters. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that doesn't. But um, the uh, the best hunters, the ones that survive, tend to be very prepared. If they can find out what they're dealing with, um, they are very good at coming up with uh, counter strategies, exploiting weaknesses. Um, your guess since they were able to capture the Wendigo uh, these guys are pretty decent um, the thing that's unknown is do they know about you all if they don't know you have a real advantage if they're prepared for you, you're going to be in trouble very quickly. Hmm. 
Well, was that only two questions, or was that all three questions? Uh, he only had two because he didn't get a ten oh, plus. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Um, I mean, it's understandable that they'd know about the Wendigo. That's because he does something that's a little bit more obvious. But yeah, I don't know if it seems less likely that they know about us, but yeah. Well, here's my plan. I plan to um, peek through a window, get them kind of scared off to one side, um, teleport behind them, and then Then we'll, we'll go from there. So your goal is to... Do we improve. know... Go ahead. What? I said go I'll ahead. I'll say, do we know if the Wendigo is in the building? As far as we can tell? Uh, you can smell that he ended up here. Oh, okay. Um, but it is a little obscure once you get here. We'll just have to clear the building first, and um, and the yeah. best way is to um, we'll kill the hunters. I don't really see any other way around this. Yep. So I can either distract them by like running in from a window, mm -hmm. and they see a big, large wolf outside. And then you can kind of like come in behind them. I see. Yeah, I was going to turn invisible, and then yeah, maybe I can. All right. So Graham wants to create a distraction, and Zenith wants to turn invisible and sneak inside. Yeah. Unless, unless you want to like frighten them and see if they're amateurs. In that case, you could, like, strike the building with lightning, or, like, it's not lightning. We could, like, try to strike the building and make it seem like it's going to collapse on them and see if they, any of them panic and run outside. What do you think? Distract them or, like, see if we can make them panic? Try to freak them out. Because I can it's also, I could like affect the electricity in the area. I don't know, like take out the lights or uh, oh, make the car alarms work. In my yeah. game, so much. <laughs> if the house is dark, oh, right. I'm anywhere, everywhere, just not there. All right, so you want to try and blow out the electricity? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. So you're going to use lightning magic or... Uh, light, yeah, it'd be lightning okay, magic. Cool. All right. Uh, roll invoke plus spirit. Okay. 2d6. Oh, man. Uh oh, I got two ones. <laughs> oh no! Ah, <sighs> so Whew. So, here is where you find out what you have gotten into. So you passed all those traps on your way here. Um. You know, trip lines and uh, like road spikes and, you know, in this moment you think about it and you go, these people are hunting monsters. Why did they put such obvious like humanoid centric traps? And it's mm -hmm. right about the time you think this that you 
unleash this this electric jolt trying to sort of short circuit all this technology blow out uh, all the power in the house and as you try to channel this magic uh you get it and you shape it and then suddenly it like drains away and you realize the reason they put such obvious traps is so you wouldn't be thinking about less obvious traps that are far more dangerous glowing runes uh, light up where they have been painted on trees uh, sort of encircling uh, this this farmhouse um, your electrical energy is captured and dispersed uh, by these arcane enchantments uh, and as soon as that happens there is a pulse of sound from inside uh, and then the sound of yelling um, you all have just a moment before uh there is uh, a spray of gunfire in your direction as these highly trained, very prepared hunters uh, flock to the front of this building to drive away the intruders. And I think yeah. that's where we're going to put a pin in it. Um, is CJ back next week or the week after? I don't remember now. Week Probably. after. Okay. It was like three yeah. weeks. All right, then that should be perfect. Yeah. If we're all available next week, uh, we're going to play this rescue from both sides, uh, from the inside and the outside, uh, which should be yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, so we leave you uh, ducking behind cars, a hail of bullets, uh, glowing runes lighting up all around this clearing. Um, and uh, somewhere, uh, the Wendigo, uh, restrained and injured, uh, not knowing that rescue is arriving, uh, perhaps, uh, yeah. <laughs> or at least uh, his his rescue might be in as much trouble as he's in. Yeah. So that's what we're going to call it for the night. I'm going to stop our recording and cut off the stream. Bye, mm -hmm. Internet. Bye.